This is a Jelly Roll Martin composition entitled The Chant. He was born Ferdinand Lamont in New Orleans, Louisiana on October 20th, 1890. He was descended of Spanish, African, and French, which in New Orleans is called Creole. Now Creoles thought they were better than other people. By other people, I mean whoever is not Creole. They believed in culture, classical music, opera, giving their kids music lessons, and in keeping a job, mainly a trade like cigar making or cabinet maker, something like that where you work with your hands. So little Ferdinand started to play the guitar when he was only six. By the time he was 10, he had taken up his main instrument, the piano. He learned how to play very quickly. And in three or four years, he was playing the piano all over New Orleans, in some high class places, and also in some not so nice, but more interesting places. He devoted less and less time to classical studies and found work in the Storyville district, which was a section of most ill repute. Because Lil' Jelly Roll was so curious, he heard and loved music that went on all over the city. Classical music and opera, marches and dance music, ragtime, blues, spirituals, and hymns like this one. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch. His grandma loved to hear the sounds of the hymns, reminded of a good church service on a Sunday morning. But Jelly Roll also loved the sounds that his grandmother didn't particularly like. I'm talking about the sound of the blues. When his grandmother found out that he was playing this type of music, she threw him right out of the house when he was only 15 years old. But don't cry for him, because with his piano, Jelly Roll was able to make a very good living. Now, in addition to the blues, he loved to play ragtime. And that wasn't too unusual because people all over America played rags. Well, at that time, everybody had a piano in their parlor. The best known rag was Scott Joplin's Maple Leaf Rag. Sounded like this. Yeah, Jelly played a lot of ragtime, but ragtime was written music. You didn't go off of the sheet. You stuck to the score. That just wasn't enough for Jelly. He liked to jazz tunes up, make up other parts, add notes, give them a new feeling, put something different in the bass, give different harmonies, just make the tunes feel more alive. <laughs> Thank you. 
This adding notes and giving them a new feeling, new harmonies and all of this, we call that improvisation. And Jelly Roll loved to improvise. But he also wanted to put the improvised music down on paper so that all of those people who couldn't improvise would still sound good. He figured out how to write pieces that sounded like what a whole band of musicians were playing, with each musician jazzing up their particular part. He knew how to utilize instruments like the trumpet, the trombone, clarinet, guitar, the piano, in different ways that made a whole performance exciting and coherent. He could write three or four melodic lines at once. This is called counterpoint. His composition showed everyone what real jazz music sounded like. Now you got to remember, jazz was still very young and there was no TV or even radio. So sheet music could travel much faster than the sound of a band. Jelly Roll's compositions were intelligently constructed and full of musical devices that audiences found exciting. For example, he used wide open harmonies and variations in volume to make horn parts much more interesting, like this introduction to his masterpiece, Black Bottom Stomp. Then, after everyone plays for a while, he'll give the trumpet a solo while the ensemble plays breaks. A break just means they stop and you keep playing and they come back in. the piece with excitement and drive, Jelly allows the trumpet, trombone, and clarinet to improvise separate lines at the same time. So we have him writing a composition which has improvisation in it. This is called polyphonic improvisation, and it's one of the greatest achievements of New Orleans jazz, that musicians could make up their own horn lines by listening to each other and fulfilling specific roles, and that they could do this by choice and make music and not noise. It's very democratic, very democratic. This is Black Bottom Stomp. I want you all to pay attention to how Jelly Roll breaks up the ensemble to create drama and motion in the music.
Jelly Roll was one of the first people to take jazz seriously as art. He felt that he could take his listeners to a higher level through music. He said that jazz is the finest music because it's made of all the finest music. He believed in the power and beauty of New Orleans customs. From the most sophisticated to the ridiculously crude, he put the entire life of the city into his music. This piece is inspired by a New Orleans jazz funeral. It's entitled The Dead Man Blues. Time. Man, you don't hear no church bell ringing at 12 o'clock in the day. Man, don't tell me. Somebody must be dead. Ain't nobody dead. Somebody must be dead drunk. No, no, no. I think somebody is dead. I hear that trombone phone. <laughs> Jelly Roll liked his music to sway, swing, and bounce. He loved syncopated phrases. Now, syncopation just means that you accent some unexpected beat. And he realized that by playing a note twice, the music would become even more syncopated. <laughs> You'll always hear this double note in Jelly Roll's music. Jelly Roll was a colorful character, had a diamond in one of his front teeth. He was many things, a pool shark, a con man who sold snake oil door to door. He traveled all over America, sometimes hoboing on trains, 
Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, California, Kansas City, everywhere. He drove two Cadillacs, tied one onto the back of the other and drove both of them. Oh, he loved to brag about everything he'd done. He was also a genius of music and the first great composer of jazz. Jelly Roll even claimed to have invented jazz. He was the first intellectual in jazz, and that made him a very lonely man. It also ensured that he would get bad reviews. Regardless of incessant criticism, he was a very proud man who understood his own importance. He used to say, jazz music is to be played sweet, soft, plenty rhythm. And when you have your plenty rhythm with your plenty swing, well, then it becomes beautiful. Now we're going to play two selections that demonstrate the range of Jelly Roll's music. First, the pearls, which has a bright, sophisticated, graceful feeling, like a society party in the big city. Then we're going to hear a low-down, late-night, back-of-town groove with a slow-drag feel. Courthouse bump. Thank you. 